In this lesson, we will learn how to animate a seamless cycle in Maya. Cycles are used often to save time in a production. You might find that they're used for background characters that walk through a set, just to kind of populate it. They're also used for video games. So as you start to button mash on your controller, the character that you're controlling is going through a series of cycles that an animator has done, just to make sure that the character moves desirably. So let's go to learn how to animate cycles because they can help us save time. Now what we have here is a little platform that the robot is resting on. So we can call this our hovering platform and we'll go ahead and animate it with a seamless loop. Now there are a few steps to keep in mind. For one, we should make sure that our start and end frames are identical. That'll help us achieve a seamless cycle as we loop through our animated sequence. We should also make sure that our F curves are set up in a way to achieve a seamless cycle, and we'll talk about that shortly. Now, before we set any keyframes, let's go ahead and figure out the timing that we need just to make sure that this moves realistically. We know that our robot here is probably pretty heavy, but we don't want the object to move too slowly because it will not look convincing at that point. I'm going to go ahead and set the end time to about 51. All right, fantastic. Next, let's say we go ahead and create our first key on frame one. I'll go ahead and press Shift W. And now let's go ahead and make sure that our end time is identical. So we could always just go ahead and move to frame 51 and again press Shift W to transfer those values. Another way is to copy and paste the keyframe. So watch this. If we were to go ahead and right click, we can choose copy. Now we can go to the frame that we'd like to paste on. Then you can right click and choose paste. You'll notice that you have a paste option and then a paste connect option. The paste connect is used to kind of blend into an F curve in a way where you get a seamless paste but sometimes that can kind of throw off your values a bit. So what I'd like to do is work with paste, which is just a direct paste of whatever you've copied. Let's go ahead and choose paste, and there we have it. So we've managed to transfer that value. Nice. And by the way, this works for a range of keyframes as well. Next, let's say we go ahead and add a midpoint. Now you can see I'm working with an odd number of frames. That's because this gives us a really nice midpoint to work with. So it's really simple math. We would simply subtract one frame, simply because when we're ready to view the cycle in the viewport here, we wouldn't want to view the last frame. We would get a little bit of a pause, right? Because our first and last frames are identical. So what we would do here to figure out the midpoint is to subtract one frame, and then we would divide by two. So half of 50 is 25. And then we need to factor in that last frame. So we would just add 1, and that'll give us 26. This also gives us really nice sub midpoints to work with of 13 and 38. All right, but let's say we go ahead and add some movement now. I'll make sure that Auto key is on. We'll go to frame 26. And let's say we go ahead and bring the robot up just a bit, just a little bit. All right, so watch this. Now when we hit play, can see that we have a seamless cycle and that's simply because of the F curves that we've just created. All right, sweet. So is that all there is to it? Well, not quite. Let's go ahead and add some more to the movement. Let's say we have the robot kind of tilt in the Z axis. Now we need to make sure that this is subtle. So don't animate this to any extreme at all. Otherwise it'll look weird, right? It'll look like something's wrong with the object that he's hovering on. So let's say we do this. We'll go to frame 1, we'll right click and choose key selected. We'll go to frame 51 and do the same thing. We want to lock down this range. Anything that we're animating, we need to make sure we lock it down in this range. This is really important for game animations as well because if we don't do this, it might throw off the cycle when it's added to the game engine. I'll now go to frame 13, and we'll add a slight tilt. doesn't matter what direction, but keep in mind that whatever direction you decide on with this frame, you'll want to use the exact opposite on the mirrored frame. 
So in this case, I might go ahead and set the value to about negative 1. I'll round it out to that. And now what we could do is go ahead and use the reciprocal on the mirrored frame, which is 38. So we'll go ahead and use a value of positive 1. All right, fantastic. So now let's go ahead and hit play. Now you're going to see a pretty nasty pause that we'll need to clean up. So let's say we do this. We'll stop the lesson here. In the next lesson, we'll learn how to clean up our animation to have it loop seamlessly. And then, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to have this loop infinitely in time.